Tom Mazaway, good afternoon to you, my friend. Hey, Rye, what a great night last night was. What a f- fun game. First quarter was amazing. I was like, I couldn't stop smiling. And then it got a little tight. I'll be honest, it got a little tight. But really, never lost faith in them because that defense was that good. And boy, did they punish those Washington players. They were walking off in pain. And congratulations to Jim Harbaugh and the Michigan Wolverines for finishing the job when every thing was against them. Every single thing was against this team. I was watching last night, and I was it was weird how I felt. I couldn't describe appropriately how I felt watching the game. I was, in a way, surprisingly a little subdued just sitting there watching the game. And when the clock hit zero and that confetti kind of came down and everybody was running around chasing Jim Harbaugh, trying to get and give him the Gatorade bath. Ultimately, they were successful in giving him the Gatorade bath. I just thought to myself, all of the work that these guys have been through, all of the shows that we have done over the years with the September Heismans and the Tate Forciers in the Mark D'Antonio era and losing to Ohio State seemingly 20 years in a row for the last two decades going through the Rich Rodriguez era uh, going through an era of Jim Harbaugh in which you know Ohio State's head coach at one point said we were going to hang 100 on him um, but then ultimately COVID got in the way and the game had to be canceled for 20 years of frustration 20 years of storylines and I know it's been you know 26 years since their last national title but uh, that team in 2006 was pretty damn good too and, and probably could have won a national championship but this team did do that and and essentially from you know Appalachian State in 2007 this thing has gone downhill but for the last three years specifically Jim Harbaugh and what he's been able to do at Michigan has been nothing short of spectacular. I was one of those guys that was hoping uh, that Michigan would make a change after that COVID year. I did not think uh, Jim Harbaugh was going to get it done at Michigan. And thankfully, I was wrong. He had one bowl win, no Big Ten titles, 0-6 against Ohio State. Hell, Michigan State had his number but the last three years since Michigan cut his salary in order to stay the Wolverines athletic department cut Jim Harbaugh's salary you want to stay at Michigan you want to stay the head coach at Michigan here's what we're going to do you're going to take less you're going to take a pay cut embarrass them and there you have it since that time 40 and 3 Hmm. three straight Big Ten titles never been done in the history of Michigan football before he has not lost to Ohio State in three years a 15-0 perfect season which has not been done in Michigan football history the this era of Michigan football this team at Michigan the 2023 team is the greatest collection of players that this university has ever seen and they are the national champions and to be able to say that is it leaves me speechless well said too for being speechless you hit it all on the head (laughs) and this is we've seen it the last three years this is the greatest michigan time ever pass Bo, pass them all this is the guy now jim harbaugh and his uh, merry men, merry band of men got this job done. They are a real family. And you see the Harbaugh family. How do you not love the Harbaugh family? I mean, how do you not? Parents go to the games. His brother, John Harbaugh, could be coach of the year this year. He's got the number one team in the Baltimore Ravens. He finds time. Uh, So many delays in the airports. I had three friends get stranded in Jacksonville with tickets, and they couldn't make it to the freaking game. Luckily for them, they were able to sell them on the on the market there when they knew they couldn't get there. I heard uh, Derek Kevra said he had a friend got a layover in they they the plane got diverted to Austin. Yeah, they had to rent a car and drove there. Well, good for them. Yeah. My yeah. people were in Jacksonville. Yeah, they had crazy. no chance to make it to Houston. 
But John Harbaugh got there. And you see him sneak up on his brother yeah, in the second, second quarter. quarter. That was fantastic. And then at the end, they're all celebrating. It's just, it, it's just so great. Even if you don't like Michigan, how do you not like this story? I mean, they have gotten everything thrown at them. Everything. Like people calling them cheaters. People saying that they shouldn't have these wins. That Jim Harbaugh shouldn't be allowed to coach. That this team isn't worthy. Then you got guys from the SEC. Everyone picking against Michigan. All those coaches. All those broadcasters. I don't think there was one. Maybe one or two that picked Michigan to win. And we'll tell you about Paul Feinbaum later. <laughs> even he's now a Michigan fan. Or at least he admitted he was wrong about this team. They even said, how about Georgia? Who would you pick? He's like, Michigan's the best team in the country. And they are the best team in the country. The best team won the national championship. And it was a good game. But they pounded and beaten the crap out of that Washington team. Washington, they had no chance to win that game. Donovan Edwards, fantastic first quarter. You know, six runs. Yeah, and and, and I want to get into the game in just a little bit. We could pick out bit, bits and pieces of the game, but he sure. Was but just absolutely. But just a, a couple of just overall general uh, themes from this game. I'll drop my pen here. It Need is. one? No, yeah. I got it. Um, you know, I was thinking about um, you know the Big Ten too last night, and you know we never thought a Big Ten team not named Ohio State could ever win the national championship. Uh, Ohio State plays at a different speed. Ohio State recruits a different type of player. I believe Michigan, and, and, and somebody might be able to correct me on this, I believe Michigan only was playing with two five-star players last night. That's Will Johnson and uh, the quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. Sounds about right. Those are the only two five stars on this team. And every year we'd go through, oh, Alabama and Georgia and LSU and the SEC just recruit a different type of player. And Michigan, their cap would be maybe you could beat Ohio State <laughs> at some point, potentially maybe three times in 10 years, something like that. But that is your cap. That is where you are capped off. And that wasn't the case. And as I'm watching that game, and as it, it is becoming clear in the fourth quarter that Michigan's going to win it with every uh, Blake Corum touchdown run and every interception after that, uh, as it was becoming clear, I'm like, they're going to win the national championship. And you just can't help but think back to all of those times you were arguing with a college football fan Maybe it was a Michigan fan. Maybe it was a Michigan State fan or an Ohio State fan or somebody that just loves college football. Maybe it's somebody that doesn't pay attention to college football at all, but the only thing they know is that the SEC wins the national championship every right. year. Um, they would always tell you that it can never be done at Michigan. It just can't happen. It's not the, uh, the, the university, the administration – they, they wouldn't let the type of kid in, in the, they're good, in the but Michigan. They're not great. Right. That could go all the way. And I just, last night, all of those dragons were slayed. And it was just awesome to see. And for Jim Harbaugh and all the things that he's been through, for these players and all the things that they've been through, they played six, six games this year without their head coach. Yeah. And I thought Jim Harbaugh was great afterwards. Uh, somebody asked about the accomplishment and, and this, that, and the other thing. And he, he interjected. Uh, he said it was the way it, it was supposed to be. And we did it the right way. We're yep. innocent. Those were her, his words. We're innocent. And that will play out. Uh, we'll see what happens. And I know there's a faction of people out there today that will never give Michigan credit for anything they do. And that's fine. I really am not going to allow that to steal my joy on a day like today. Maybe that's a tomorrow story or a next week story or something like that. I don't know what day that story is, but it ain't today for me. It's already in the books. They won. Um, they, they did it. Yeah, it, it's not today for me. So um, I just want to say this was an unbelievable experience the last six weeks or so seven weeks of the season since the time they played Penn State brought me some of the greatest joy as a Michigan football fan that I've ever experienced from Penn State to Ohio State 
to winning a Big Ten championship for a third straight year, something no other Michigan team has done outright Big Ten championships, uh, to beating Alabama and slaying that SEC dragon in the Rose Bowl nonetheless, and then to cap it off with uh, a dominating performance, really, against a really good Washington team, the second-best team in the country, to win the national championship game in Houston is something no Michigan fan will ever forget. They made Michael Penix look average they made uh i know their running back was hurt but he played hard their offensive line was dominated by this michigan defense wow i mean jesse minner fantastic job. unbelievable fantastic staff that jim harbaugh put together how lucky are we here if you root for michigan or you root for the lions how about those staffs that these coaches and executive boards put together how about it man how about everyone asking Everyone wanting Jim Harbaugh to come back. All the players. Uh, Ward Manuel says it. Look, I don't blame the NFL for wanting to look at this guy. We want to keep him and we hope he stays. But no one will begrudge him if he goes and talks to people. And he will. He'll talk. And hopefully he'll make the decision to stay close to those people that were at the game last night. His parents and the rest of his family. He names every single person in his family that means so much to him. His boys at Michigan, and his family at home in Ann Arbor. And I hope that's where his home is going forward. You know, you talk about family. One of the things, as college football continues to change as well, the one thing that does seem to stay consistent in college football is that at Michigan, and this is cliche, I know it's written in the tunnels. I said it after Alabama, and I'll say it after this too. It really is about the team, the team, the team. You know, if you listen to any of this post game, it was Blake Corum talking about Donovan Edwards. Donovan Edwards talking about Blake Corum. J.J. McCarthy talking about the offensive line. Mikey Sanders still. Mikey Sanders still talking about the whole team. Uh, The the linebackers talking about the offensive line. The offensive line (laughs) talking about the defense and the dominating performances. The head coach talking about the assistant coaches. I just don't see that in college football anymore. And I think one of the things that Braylon has pointed out, which I thought was totally perfect uh, on this show a couple of weeks ago when they were playing Ohio State, when Michigan was playing Ohio State. It's that Ohio State seems like they went from a team that just, you come here, you go to the league. Correct. But at Michigan, you come here and you're joining something bigger than yourself. And oh yeah, by the way, you'll probably go to the league too. 15, 20 players on the field last night going to have an opportunity to play at the next level. Jamie Morris is going to